wanted to make a little video explaining a little project I've been working on in my spare time. It uses a piece of software called Max, which you might be familiar with. You might know it under the name Max MSP, which is what it used to be called, and that's what I still know it as, to be honest. Um, Max is usually used for audio-based applications. It's, uh, I mean, it can be used in so many different situations, it's ridiculous. So I won't go over sort of all the applications for it now, but... Um, I thought it'd be nice to try and have a go at making a game using Max. And this is what I came up with. Be advised, this isn't a tutorial. Um, I'm not an expert with this software at all. Um, this is, to be honest, it's more for me than anybody because I inevitably go back to my patches at a later date and can never remember how they work. So this is sort of a document for me to remember what I did when I did it. So let me talk you through what's going on as if you were a new player and you just been you, you just opened this application so you've got the little info file here which tells you to uh your objective is to find the entrance to the labyrinth it says find the entrance to the labyrinth and then it's arrow keys to navigate space bar to attack or interact and enter to use potion i've got a uh, space bar and enter map to these two buttons here and I've got the arrow keys uh, mapped to these here so you can see exactly what I'm doing. So this is what you get if you first open the game. The volume's off automatically. I'm going to keep it off so it doesn't irritate us, that 8-bit music. And I'm going to just uh, go through and explain what's going on. So when I press spacebar, we go into the game world. This little square here, this black square, is basically our map. It shows us exactly where we've been with a sort of snake-like trail of, uh, of light green. So if I go to the right, you can see... We've got that light green going on and then what we've got in the uh, left square is basically an indication of um, what uh, is in that particular tile so we're in this tile at the moment and there's a there's a chest in there and if I go down one there's nothing in there so if I go back up the chest should still be there so it's persistent in that sense everything in this game is procedurally generated well actually i'm not sure that's the right term i keep using that but it's randomly generated so the contents of each tile be it empty be it uh, a chest or be it an enemy like you saw earlier is randomly determined as is the sort of particular visual patch these this by the way is supposed to be grass in case you didn't pick up on that i'm not very artistically inclined i used paintbrush to create all the visuals for this game so uh, don't use definitely don't use this as an in instruction but definitely don't use the visuals as any kind of how-to so as you wander around you'll stumble into battles with enemies and the idea is you sort of kill the enemies and you get uh, earn experience as you go oh man three two misses in a row there we go when you kill the enemy they get replaced by a little gravestone and if you leave and go back the gravestone's still there and you get the experience every time you kill them now to get to the next level you need that level's amount of kills in experience so to get to level two i need two uh kills to get to fill this bar and then when i'm at level two to get to level three i need three so it gets exponentially harder to level up um as you wander around you'll eventually get to the edge and that's completely walled off all the way around is completely walled off the idea is that you're supposed to wander around this game and eventually there we go leveled up i'm level two now Eventually, you will uh, land on a very special tile, which doesn't have a, a chest or an enemy or, or an empty uh, tile. It's got something else in there, and I'm going to show you that now. So, you know, let's imagine you're the you're the you're the player who's who started this game. You might be sort of five minutes in if you've managed to stick around that long. And the idea is you might have killed enough enemies to get you up to level five, and something special happens at level five. So I've just hit the debug key, which gives me. Um, a kill every second and a half which is going to get me nearly up to level five we're going to do one kill away and then we're going to get the uh the last one ourselves so let's go find an enemy there we go perfect um so if i take him out that's going to open up the map so this map now fills in and that shows us exactly what's going on in the game world also i should note that when I'm in uh, a fight, the uh, let me find another fight and explain that to you. So if I hit right here, we can now see the bright green uh, block is us again. The uh, dark green is just an empty tile. The brown is a chest and the red is an enemy. So let's find an enemy so I can explain the battle system. There we go. So when the battle starts, um, you can't exit, you can't leave. So um, you're stuck, basically. You have to defeat the enemy to escape. He'll keep attacking you every, you know, how often... Um, 
actually I can't remember how often I set that to but I did I did some play testing and figured that this worked every time it hits you your health goes down by a set amount plus or minus a sort of variable um, and you can attack back by hitting space or I've got it triggered to this button but you can't mash so I have to wait for the ATB to fill when his health goes to the bottom the orange bar is his health he dies um, but you know I've lost a lot of health here so I'm gonna I'm gonna use some potions to get back to full health. The reason it's staggering me um, using those, I can't use them straight away, is to A, stop the player from accidentally using too many, and also there's an audio effect. So uh, just to avoid this enemy here, I could go into god mode. I've got a little god mode set up, which gives me infinite life, and I don't have a cooldown on my attack. So if I go to the chest now and press my enter key, that's going to fill my potion. Let's listen to that sound effect. And... Oh, sorry, that was <laughs> my bad. That was a user potion. Let me try that again. There we go. So that fills the uh, fills the potion. So we've now got two. Um, so uh, the other tile we've got here, you can see, hopefully you can see that clearly, is a yellow square there. So let's find out what's going on there. I am going to wander all the way to the top, avoiding enemies and chests on the way and as you can see on the outside of the map the gray or it might look like white on your monitor the gray map is uh gray line is the wall that you can't get through um i'm just going to keep going through here now you might have seen earlier the grass changes each tile you go on and, and it does remain every tile you you move to um so let's say we've got the grass here we've got sort of a Let's find a bit that sort of stands out. So we've got a big block here of light green, and then we've got the, the flower there. If I go down one and up one, we've got the block of light green and the flower. So it, it's persistent, but it is randomly generated each time. So this particular uh, tile, uh, whatever the X and Y axis is of it, um, will look different each time. And you might have seen earlier when I was navigating that I landed on two of the same tiles in a row, and that's really frustrating. I haven't managed to find a way to get around that yet. Um, I've got sort of 200 and, and something randomly generated tiles, but I always end up accidentally generating two next to each other. So if I land on the yellow square, there we go, we've got this thing here. So if I press space bar, I'm gonna turn up the volume so you can hear this. So a passage has opened, and that basically t lets us know that um, an entranceway has appeared. Now, without giving the player too much information, um, you, you'd be expected to sort of wander around and hopefully find that exit, but to reveal to you, the viewer, um, the wall now has an, a, a break in it. One of these tiles, these wall tiles, which would normally be inaccessible, let's go and have a look at those now, um, has broken. So normally it's this block here, but one of them has broken off. Now, the... Uh, one way you could find that is just by walking around the whole uh, perimeter of the map, but also similar to when we hit level five and we got that um, that map reveal, when you get to level eight, after having lit the candle, um, the exit tile will appear um, and it will just be replaced by a green tile. So we're just going to do that. We're going to let that fill up and get to level eight. Um, Let's wait until it gets to the top and do the last kill ourselves. And then I can show you basically the end game. And then we'll have a look under the hood at what's going on. So let's uh, do one more fight. The enemies, by the way, look different each time. Uh, not Sorry, not each time you play, but when the enemy is seeded, it's seeded with a color value. Um, you could do... I mean, I could have done different enemy designs, but this is the only one I could get to make look good. Again, I use paintbrush to create all these effects, so don't, you know... Hold me to that. Ah, here we go. So, uh, yeah, I, I was just saying the, the enemy looks different each time. There's four different colours of those eyeballs. But as I killed that enemy, you might have noticed just here, we were actually right next to it. The exit has opened up. So if I go into the exit or on the tile next to the exit now, you can see there's a gap here for us to go through. So let's go through. And now you can see we've got the uh, the, the wall has got a sort of annex to it. And we've got this hatch here. So if I press space bar, that should open the hole and then the credits come up. So this just says winner, winner, winner. We've got some credit music there, some quite catchy music there. I think that's pinched from a Final Fantasy game, but don't hold me to that. Um, 
and that's it and that's how, how the game works and you can reset and everything resets so the candle location will be different the exit location will be different the enemies will be in different places and the chests will be in different places and that's the whole idea of the game it's not supposed to be well it was supposed to be quite exciting but let's be honest i'm not the most visually capable uh, uh programmer or you know artist out there so uh, it's not super compelling to play, but it's. I set out to achieve what I what I wanted to. The one thing that I am going to go back and do on this is to change the battle system because the um, waiting for the ATB to fill up is pretty dull. Um, so what I want to do is get like a rhythm based thing. So there'll be a, a sort of metronome like thing swinging from left to right with a, a hit box area in the center. So you've got to hit when it's in time. So that'll add some sort of element to strategy to it. But that's pretty much it. So I'm just going to um, open up the innards of this so you can see what's going on.